Hello and welcome to the Bottle Opener Machining Project for IME 450. This is Paul Brenneman and my partners are Mark Butler and Albert Lidicote. I would like to extend a special thank you to Mighty Byte Products LLC for sponsoring this project and providing components. So our problem is that a fixture is needed in order to locate, hold, and support the parts to be machined. The part must be located with respect to its six degrees of freedom as specified by the datums. The fixture needs to provide precise and repeatable locating of the workpiece. The part must not move excessively during machining. The clamp needs to be against the primary locating surface through the strong section of the part. The clamp requirements were derived from tooling force calculations. The part must not deform excessively during the process. The fixture must not interfere with the toolpath. It must allow for part removal and cleaning. It must not damage or distort the part surface, and it must be ergonomic for the operator. The objective for the project had three main phases. One, the design phase and CDR. As a project team, design a fixture to hold a family of parts during their CNC milling operations. A conceptual design review with our professor aided in finalizing the fixture plate design. Two, creating assembly and toolpaths phase. Using SOLIDWORKS, create assembly model configurations and virtually test them based on the project's constraints and criteria. 3. Machining Phase Perform on-machine testing of the fixture design by running the HSM toolpaths on the Haas VF2 CNC mill. Solution Method The fixture will utilize the following tools provided by Mighty Byte to hold the parts during the CNC milling operations. These tools include locators and clamps. In addition, the software tools used were SOLIDWORKS and HSMWORKS to design the assembly and generate toolpaths. The Haas VF2 CNC mill ran the HSM toolpaths to manufacture the fixture and parts. Fixture design. Below you can see a list of the constraints that the team had to work with when designing the fixture base. The overall size constraints for the fixture was 1 inch by 4.25 inches by 9.25 inches. The fixture also had to mount to a Haas VF2 CNC mill and the fixture had to be indicated parallel or perpendicular to the axes of this machine. The fixture had to hold both CNC operations simultaneously based off of the datums listed in the part drawings and the fixture had to be unloaded and loaded in under one minute. Clamping forces for the fixture had to be able to withstand the tooling forces using a minimum factor of safety of two. In order to determine the number of clamps to use for each operation, the team calculated the maximum tooling force for both operations. For operation number one, the maximum tooling force occurred during the adaptive clearing step and the calculation can be seen below. The total tangential force per tooth came out to be 72 pounds and then we used a safety factor of four and came up with a total tangential force of 288 pounds. Seeing as the Mighty Bite clamps were rated at 800 pounds, we determined that we only needed one clamp for each operation. This is a close-up view of how the part will be mounted for operation two on the fixture. Datum A was the primary surface and is the top surface of the fixture. The secondary and tertiary datums B and C, as shown on the part drawings, derived the locations of the locating rails and dowel pins. So here we see an overall view of our fixture layout. One of the design constraints was that OP1 and OP2 must be able to be held simultaneously on the plate. Using this constraint, we were somewhat limited in where we could place OP1 and OP2. As you can see, OP1 is on the left and OP2 is on the right. We added a clearance hole on OP1 so the clamp could be tightened in OP2. This is our exploded assembly drawing. It shows all of the different components
bolts and corresponding fasteners on the fixture plate. This is our part drawing for the fixture plate. It includes datums and geometric dimensions. Fixture machining. In order to machine the fixture plate, we first started with an assembly file in SolidWorks. From that, we were able to create toolpaths using HSMWorks. HSMWorks also allowed us to export these toolpaths as G-code. This G-code was then inserted into the Haas VF2 CNC mill. Once we did that, we ran the program on the stock plate and this gave us the final fixture plate. Once we took it out of the mill, we had to deburr the edges and the holes and finally we installed the locating component supplied by Mighty Byte. At this point, our fixture was ready to be tested. Fixture testing. First we created an after machining configuration in the SolidWorks assembly. We then created toolpaths in HSMWorks based on the AAM configuration. These toolpaths were exported as G-code. The indicating band on the fixture plate was used to indicate the x-axis. The Haas WIPS probe was then used to set the home locations for OP1 and OP2. Stock was then loaded into the OP1 position and G-code was run for OP1. The same was done for OP2. So we're just trying to probe the X against the side of this block right here. So we're going to use this new Haas WIPS probe. So in order to do that, we just get it within point four of the block that we're trying to touch off from. So we come over here, we go to MDI, we go to Program Conversation, we come down here to one of the we come over to here, we want to go X plus surface, go ahead and hit enter, we're going to tell it that we want it to do the 55 offset, send it to MDI, a three-quarter inch end mill will be used to contour the fixture to the length required and add the indicating band. A half inch end mill will be used to clear out the recesses on either end of the fixture plate so that the bolts used to clamp the plate down to the machine table can be recessed. That same half inch end mill will be used to create a recess for the Mighty Bite clamp used in OP1. A quarter inch end mill will be used to create pockets for the slide rail in OP1, the Mighty Bite clamp recess in OP2, as well as the two smaller slide recesses to be used in OP2. That same quarter inch end mill will be used to create a clearance pocket so that a clearance hole can be drilled in OP1. The holes required to mount the components will be spot drilled. A 0.368 inch drill will be used to create the holes for the 375 dowel pins. A 0.257 inch diameter tap drill will be used to create threads necessary to mount the components. A 0.374 inch diameter reamer will be used for the dowel pin holes. A chamfer tool will be used to break all sharp edges. A two inch diameter four insert face mill will be used to face up one. A half inch three flute end mill will be used for the adaptive clearing step. This is an aggressive cut at 80 inches per minute, generating an approximate tangential cutting force of 288 pounds. A quarter inch diameter end mill will be used to finish profile op one. That same quarter inch diameter end mill will be used to create the pocket.
8.257 inch diameter drill bit will be used to create the lanyard hole in OP1. Again, a quarter inch diameter chamfer tool will be used to break all sharp edges. A .368 inch diameter drill will be used to create the access hole necessary to clamp the part for operation to it. And that's OP1 finished. Removing the part from OP1 is as simple as loosening the Mighty Bike clamp and popping the part out. The part is then loaded in the OP2 fixture configuration. Note how the access hole is used in order to get the tool onto the Mighty Bike clamp. A 2 inch diameter face mill will be used to face OP2. A quarter inch diameter chamfer tool will be used to break all sharp edges. A 1 16th inch diameter ball and mill will be used to engrave the Cal Poly logo, thus finishing OP2. The results from fixture testing were that the chamfer was not perfect on Operation 2 due to part rotation caused by the clamp location on the fixture plate. Other than that, the parts came out as they were meant to be every time. Reflecting on the fixture design post-machining, the team decided that the fixture design was good for Operation 1, assuming the stock was correctly sized. But the clamp was placed in a non-ideal location in Operation 2, which caused some slight rotation to the part. Some limitations of the fixture were derived from that clamp location in Operation 2. Also, increased clamping force would be nice in order to run higher feed rates and lowering our machining time. Conclusions Problem Summary The problem that the project team faced was to design and manufacture a fixture that could secure stock for Ops 1 and 2 in order to machine a finished part. Objective Summary the objective of the project group was to design and manufacture a CNC milling fixture to machine a two-operation CNC mill part. The objective consisted of three separate phases, the design, assembly and toolpaths, and machining phases. Solution Approach The solution approach consisted of using the Mighty Byte locators and clamps as the main tools to hold the stock on the fixture. The software assembly and toolpaths were completed using SOLIDWORKS and HSMWORKS respectively. The machine used to manufacture the fixture and parts was the Haas VF2 CNC machine. Most important results. The most important result was that in op number two, our part rotated because the clamp and rail were not directly across from each other. Therefore, a moment was created and caused the part to rotate during op number two. The rotation caused the part to be misaligned, so the outside chamfer was mispositioned on the part. In order to solve the moment problem, we had to drill an additional hole and put a 0.375 inch dowel pin to keep the part from rotating during op number two. Unfortunately, our redesign did not help us mitigate the moment completely, and the outside chamfer still was slightly mispositioned. Improvements. For the redesign, we recommend placing the clamp and rail across from each other in order to mitigate the moment on the part. This way, the part could be properly positioned 
and the outside chamfer could be in the correct position.